Well, you guys, I finished the challenge. 30 days with Kiara Lachey, the Tabata challenge, and my results, as you can see, yes. Um, I wasn't really worried about pounds, so I actually went down to dress size, which is amazing. I am now back into a medium, yes. So in October, she's going to be doing another challenge where you can sign up. So hit the link down below and sign up for the next Kiara Lachey Trap and Tone Challenge in October. And don't forget about the tea, y'all. The tea really aided in the look, okay? If you think it happened in a month, all because I was working out, no. It's also because of the tea. Sometimes I still ate pizza, but yay! Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another marriage boot camp hip hop edition. This is the finale episode, okay? Y'all, so much has been going on like with Tahiri and with Joe Budden and we're gonna talk about it in the Bondi Blue show because I'm kinda not in the mindset to talk about it right now. I kinda just wanna get straight into my notes. But I'm just gonna say that I'm team Tahiri and you know, Y'all can just take that however y'all want to, but I'm team Tahiri. The beginning of the episode starts off where the last one left off, which was with Erica. And I know a lot of y'all are, you know, very confused. Hazel E is not her real name. Her real name is Erica. That's what the E is for, okay? She has hazel eyes and she's light-skinned, so she calls herself Hazel E, okay? And yes, I will watch Hazel and Masika's conversation and fight and scream and holler and cuss at each other on Zeus Network because I pay for Zeus, so why not, okay? So yes, pressing on. Phaedra tells Erica that it was vomit on Devon's jeans and not some girl's like, you know, menstruation. I was just really annoyed that she thought that's what that was. Like, are girls really going around doing that? Like just, you know, menstruating on people's thighs? Is that something we're doing? I didn't think that was something we were doing like that. So the fact that that's the first place her mind goes to, it just, I'm sorry, y'all, that's just kind of sick. I got I don't know if y'all want to, you know, admit that, but that's just kind of sick. And Phaedra comes and she's like, no, I think that's vomit. You know what I mean? Like, look at him. Like, why would you think that's what that is out of, like, look at him. Obviously, he's been throwing up. Like, what's going on, Erica? Oh, my God. So the girls... All had their little sleepover um, in one room and they wake up and they talk about Phaedra and Medina and how he's such a good guy, but she doesn't know if it can work. And we all know it isn't going to work because they're faking the funk. They're not in a real relationship together. Phaedra is just using this to raise her profile so that she can potentially get back on Bravo. And Medina is probably trying to get on another Tyler Perry project. So whatever is going on, the relationship is not real. So I won't waste my time. Zavon doesn't even remember a lot of what happened the night before him getting drunk him getting to bed hazel coming in thinking someone menstruated on his jeans you know all of that the lie detector test okay we have the results and yes medina wants to be sexual with phaedra he was not lying about that and i'm like as if that's hard most men want to be sexual with a woman who looks like phaedra like phaedra's very sexual um even if they say they don't want to be with her i think that it I'd be hard pressed to find a man who'd say they wouldn't, you know, clap those cheeks, so to speak. She doesn't want to be in a sexual relationship with him. She doesn't want to get those cheeks clapped by him. And I'm not surprised because it's not real. Judge says that Phaedra may not be comfortable being alone. She may not be comfortable with who she is as a person. I feel like Phaedra... I feel like it's hard to say because I feel like, in essence, Phaedra does know who she is as a woman. You know, she's a 40-something-year-old woman. She has children. She's accomplished. She has a career. I would be talking out the side of my neck if I were to say I felt like Phaedra doesn't know who she is. But I feel like there's a part of Phaedra that cares so much about what everybody thinks about her that she doesn't want to fix or deal with whatever her issue is because it's too ugly. You know what I'm saying? It's not pretty and, you know, um, presentable for everyone. And I think that she's still so worried about that. And I don't think anybody is free of their issue until they are no longer, um, you know, being held within the trappings of their own mind, worrying about what other people have to say. So, Willie and Shonda, will he be faithful going forward? He says he will be faithful and there was no deception indicated, okay? Willie asked if 
Shonda would be able to forgive him. And she said yes. The judge says he can open it later or not at all. Now, I don't remember if he opened it or not, but I feel like it doesn't even matter because we know they're still together and she had another baby for him after this because we found out marriage boot camp was taped like a year ago. Zavon and Hazel, we know Hazel could not take the test um, because, you know, she's pregnant and, you know, she had the miscarriage, so her hormones are kind of out of whack. Um, but he lied about being with her for clout. And he says that he doesn't even know what that means. I'm like, of course you know what that means. <laughs> of course you know what that means, Devon. Okay, we know you were with Hazel for clout because if Hazel wasn't someone who could provide you with stability, who could provide you with, you know, um, whatever business opportunities that you're trying to get if she wasn't someone who can offer you that if she was just hazel from around the way if she was just erica from around the way um then i don't think that you would have given her the time of day i don't think she was someone who you would have wanted to be in a long-term relationship with if she could not provide you with the things she provides you with point blank period so that is why you are with her for clout now he says he does love her that might have been why he got with her initially but he really does love her he really does want to be with her and I feel like no you probably love what she does for you you love the comfortability of y'all situation but don't act like it's all about you know the love now I don't believe that at all that's why the deception was indicated Tahiri and the judge talk about what she will do about Vado because they want him to come back so that, that, you know, she can say what she needs to say to him. And she does want to confront him face to face. And she's still thinking about whether she's going to give him a ring or not. I was like, that's still an option. We're still considering that. Erica is talking to Phaedra because she's distraught after finding out that Devon is really with her for clout, even though it's something she's been screaming about the entire time they've been there. Devon comes out to try to talk to her. He says, you know, she never has to post him again. She never has to help him with his career again. He really does love her. He just wants to be with her. She says, well, I've already put you on. Like you've already been on a, been on a reality show. It's already been done. But he says he really does love her. And then she calls him thirsty and throws water on him. And it's just really stupid. When they go up to their room, she's in the bathroom crying and I think she must have threw something at him and Medina came in and, you know, took him out so that it wouldn't, you know, escalate because, you know, everybody knows Devon is not exactly good at controlling himself. And then everybody gets ready for the ceremony, okay? If they're going to give one another their rings. And of course, y'all know there's all this in between them talking, what are we gonna do? Whatever. Okay, Willie and Shonda go first. He gets down on one knee. They in it forever. Okay, Willie and Shonda, of course, lead together. Zavon and Erica, she asked him to sign her management contract, and she gets 30% of everything he makes in order for him to get the ring that she has for him. He says he will sign it. He does, and now she owns his ass. So everybody got what they wanted to get out of the situation. She feels like she's not as stupid because now at least she's making money off of him. And I, hey, I'm not mad. If that's how she felt the need to handle it, that's fine. Are they still together? I feel like they might still be together, but I'm not sure. Phaedra and Medina, she says that she doesn't confront things. She knows that. Um, Medina doesn't think that she's ready for a man like him. So he doesn't have a ring in, in his box, but she does have a ring in her box. And when he sees that, he takes it out and he says, you know, if one day when she's ready, if he's still available, you know, they can try to make something shake. And I'm just kind of like, boy, bye. <laughs> boy, bye. They remain friends or people who just met on a reality show like seven days ago. So Tahiri or however many days it's been. Tahiri and Bottle talk. OK. And she says that she's doing this for all women who think that what he did was OK because it was just a shove. He says, y'all brought me out here for this. He's so upset that he's going to have to stand there and listen to her go at him about what he's done. And ever since everybody has been talking about the situation with Tahiri and bringing up, you know, her situation with Joe Button, she's alleged that, I mean, I'm not going to say alleged. I think everybody knows that Joe was abusive to Tahiri. 
Um, he has gotten on his podcast to say that she's a liar and she's, you know, pathetic and all of these other things. But at the end of the day, it, it wasn't that long ago. These young kids who don't remember in 2005, six and seven and all of that, when you're, y'all were on YouTube and putting all y'all business out there. And then on the reality show, Joe has been on drugs, was on drugs for a long time. Joe is abusive. Joe was abusive. She's not the only one that has said that. Esther Baxter also said, um, that she lost the baby because of him so at the end of the day like I'm just not for this whole idea that Tahiri is just some liar who is playing victim I don't like that y'all do that because I feel like if a woman is beat on by a man she is a victim and you don't get to decide that she's not okay because if someone were to do that to you you wouldn't like for people to, to say that about you, that, oh, she think, oh, you, you know, you want to be a victim so bad. I don't think so. And I honestly also don't feel um, that she's as aggressive as y'all make her out to seem because I feel like she handles relationships in a, a certain type of way. She handles men in a certain type of way, but I feel like that's because those men have handled her in a way. Like, you can't be aggressive with a woman, and then when she becomes aggressive with you, then all of a sudden, you know, she's doing too much, and she's wilding, and women need to keep their hands to themselves, and it's like, and men need to not disrespect gaslight, and then also put their hands on women as well. Um, You know, that's just what it is to me. But she did apologize for throwing the apple. And she said to him that I know I threw the apple at you. I would have been happier if you would have threw the apple back than waiting 40 minutes to choke me up in front of a room full of people. And I keep telling y'all that it's more so about him doing it in front of everybody than it is that he actually did it. I've said that I've said that as many times we've been talking about this, that it was the fact that he did it in front of a room full of people and cameras. Y'all are crazy if y'all think <laughs> that that was okay. Okay, or that shows in some way, you know, he doesn't have any control of himself. And I'm sorry, but I don't know a good man that thinks it's okay to put his hands on a woman. I don't. For any reason. She says that she's mad that he wasn't there for the rest of it. But she's keeping the ring for herself. And he says, this is messed up. You know, he's all upset and shit. And I'm like, dude, why you can't take the lick? Like, why you got to stand there and have a temper tantrum and act like a bitch about it? Like, just take the lick. You put your hands on this woman in front of a room full of people on national television. There are consequences to your actions, okay? Consequences to your actions. And y'all can say what y'all want to, but her throwing those apples at him, all of this is the consequence of her actions, okay? Yes, at the end of the day, she said she apologized. They didn't put it on television. I, I remember one of y'all saying, I feel like that would have been a, a teaching moment. Um, and I feel like I understand where y'all coming from. It's not okay for women to just be putting their hands on men. And I don't feel like anybody is saying that. I feel like it is problematic when men do outlandish, crazy things and we still blame the women for it as if they have no responsibility to control themselves. That is where I have an issue. I will always have an issue with that because I feel like that is the problem with society and with, with a lot of black men is that people do not hold them responsible because they're always trying to protect them. And I'm not talking about, you know, in society. I'm talking about within the confines of the black community and our relationships with one another. Women are always, black women are always so scared that y'all going to be subject to racism that we, you know, sit in silence and allow things to happen all the time because we feel like it's our duty to just be quiet and take it. And that is not our duty. That is not what we should be doing. That does not show that we love ourselves. And it does not show that you love us, that you feel like it's okay to abuse us until you get your shit together or, you know, put your hands on us. Or even if it just happened once, it should never be brought up again because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Like, no, you did the shit. <laughs> if it's brought up, you still did that shit. And, 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 and that's the lick. That's the lick. We all have to live with our mistakes. All of us have to live with our mistakes all the time. Every day, B. She doesn't even open up his lie detector test to see if he was really sorry for what he did because I feel like his actions speak volumes about how he really feels. I think he feels justified. And I think since then he's changed his story a number of times about, you know, oh, it was the cameras. Oh, she, you know, made me do it. Oh, I should have controlled myself. You know, he's just said so many things in so many different ways. And it shows a lack of maturity on Vado's part. And I wish that somebody 
would say to Vado, you need to grow the fuck up and take responsibility for yourself as a grown ass man and stop having temper tantrums all over the place. Okay. Because that's what he does. Whether y'all want to admit it or not, him choking her out was a temper tantrum. It just so happens that you're a grown ass man and you did that in front of a whole bunch of people on national television. I'm saying it again. Anyway, Dr. Ish says a van is in the driveway waiting for you and he walks the way pissed off. But I thought it was hilarious the way Dr. Ish was like, okay, and there are your walking papers. Good day, sir. Because I feel like, you know, say what you will, Vado made excuse after excuse for what he did over and over again, even in the house. And to me, the fact that you being sorry is something that changes, <laughs> depending on how you feel, um, just proves a lot to me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we can disagree. That's fine. But I feel how I feel about this situation with Sahiri and Vado. And I just feel like men should keep their hands to themselves and they should control themselves more because they are stronger. Okay, that's just how I feel about it, period. And I damn sure feel like if you're going to choke your girl up, do it in private and not on television, the fuck wrong with you? Oh, you're crazy as hell. And y'all sitting there talking about, she threw apples at him. <laughs> so what? I said it, so what? Anyway, y'all, this season of uh, Marriage Boot Camp Hip Hop Edition was trash in my opinion. Um, it had a lot of controversy surrounding it, of course. So that's always great. But all in all, it was really trash because a lot of the couples weren't real. You know, Willie and Shonda, uh, and, you know, Willie and Shonda Devon and Erica, Tony and, um, Ricardo, they were real relationships, but they're all so toxic and messed up. Willie and Shonda, you know, made it out by the skin of their chin. Uh, they're the only couple that actually gained something from this process and ended it together. I think Sahiri as a person has grown immensely um, from this process. I think there are a lot of people that you see the elevation in their thought process after they get out of marriage boot camp. Even, you know, um, walking in them, you know what I'm saying? Like they really commit to the process and you see the work after. And I feel like I was watching Sahiri's interview with uh, Hollywood Unlocked. And I feel like there is definitely been um a lot of growth with Tahiri and how she feels and about herself and her actions and all of that stuff you know what I'm saying so it made me feel validated in how I felt about this whole situation watching that interview so if y'all care enough y'all should go watch it I'm sure a lot of y'all don't because y'all just don't like her y'all just feel how y'all feel and that's that and that's fine um you know be like that <laughs> okay but you know you need to work on yourself anyway I love y'all I love y'all y'all and I'll see y'all in the next one.